All right. Good morning, everybody. It's 10 o'clock. We'll give people a couple more minutes. But uh, Koba wanted to say, hey, we're celebrating a birthday today. You can tell he doesn't really like his hat. <laughs> I won't make him wear it anymore. But uh, he wanted to come say hi before the story time. Say hi to everybody. I think he's still a little upset from, from his hat. So I'll let him go. Diana says happy birthday. <laughs> so my dog's name is Kobo with a K. It's like the letters of book, B-O-O-K, mixed up. But some people say hobo. <laughs> He's kind of like a hobo sometimes, but uh, it's Kobo. He, he has a funny story. So I used to live in Nigeria. Is anyone here, is your family from Nigeria? No. I know that we have a lot of people that live in the area, but we used to live in Nigeria. So he is from Nigeria and in Nigeria, they're tiny, like a penny, it's called a Kobo. So when I got him, he was really little. I named him Kobo because he was little like their penny. Now he's sitting far away from me right now. Happy birthday. And it's National Love Your Dog Day, I think, or Love Your Pet Day. So it's a perfect day. Perfect day. So yeah, it's actually my birthday that I was making him celebrate, but now he's got something to celebrate for him. Your birthday? It's my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank, Thank you. you. Yay. Right. We should all sing happy birthday. Not that we can hear you, but <laughs> we'll feel you. I'll feel the happy birthday. Yes. Let's sing happy birthday while we wait. One, two, three. I'm going to mute myself so you don't hear me. <laughs> Oh, I see Jade and Michelle and Diana. Thank you. Oh, I hear it. And from Lacey. And Bernice. Oh, thanks. And Kathleen and Jeremy. Oh, thank you, everybody. Aww. Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> Yes, we're just celebrating at home. So it's nice to get to share it with you guys. So yeah. while we're waiting, if everyone wants to get cuddly, you can get your stuffed animals or toys that are you like to cuddle with. You can get your blanket. I'm gonna get cozy because it's still snowing. I hope everybody is safe and warm with all this snow. So before we start reading, I'll just introduce our story for today. Oh, Marion oh. built a fort. Nice. If you want to build a fort, you have a couple more minutes so you can build one. I haven't built one because when I'm reading the stories, it's too, too dark in there to do live. But since there's no street cleaning today, again, I want to do it live because I like asking questions and seeing your answers. Oh, okay. So Mina built it, not, and Michelle's gonna build a fort. All right. So if you want to build a fort or if you wanna wrap yourself up like a burrito real tight and just get real cozy, you should do that too. Anne's gonna build a fort. Very nice, I love forts. I wish that I could manage it in a fort, but it will be a little dark. But anyway, we're going to read to uh, learn about Vivian Thomas by reading Tiny Stitches. Can anyone guess why this book would be called Tiny Stitches? And you can use the picture as a clue. Do we have, uh-huh. So stitching, well, stitching what? Is he stitching a pillow? 
is he stitching some art? Cause some people like to make art with needle and thread. Okay. It's about a doctor. They're doing surgery. Surgery. <laughs> some people, it seems like don't like surgery. Remember next week, we're going to see an open heart surgery. So if you don't like that, then you might want to skip next week because yeah, we're going to be doing heart health. So can you guess what kind of surgery? Since we know that we're studying heart health. <laughs> uh -huh. Surgery, surgery, heart replacement, heart surgery. Mm -hmm. Yes, this story is about heart surgery. And Vivian Thomas helped to, um, helped to make a surgery for blue babies is what they used to call it. Now it has a, a science scientific name, I think Tetralogy of Shalot. It's in the book, so we'll see it. But anyway, can you guess why a baby would be called a blue baby? We know it's something to do with their heart. We learned this, I believe, with the Liberty Science Center, so we can see no, they weren't all boys. They're blue. Why would a baby be blue? Oh, I saw oxygen. Uh huh. Oxygen. So he's going to, well, we'll read because he did it already. <laughs> they could breathe, but can you guess what would make, even if they can breathe, why they wouldn't get oxygen into their blood? Arteries. Blue blood. They have asthma. They're not healthy. That's, they're not healthy. Alien. <laughs> oh, Melissa had a good one. Delivering fast enough. Yeah. So when they were, when these babies, they had a problem with their heart, when they would breathe, the, the blood wouldn't go into their lungs. And what does the lungs, uh, what do the lungs do to your blood? They pump oxygen. So if the blood doesn't go into your lungs and it just stays in your heart and goes through your body, that means your body isn't getting oxygen and your blood is blue. Because remember your blood is blue before oxygen makes it what color? What color is healthy blood? Red, yeah. Blue blood means there's no oxygen. So unless it's going back to your lungs to get more oxygen, you don't want to have blue blood but that's all these little babies had. But anyway, enough talking about Vivian Thomas. Let's read about him because he has a really interesting story, a bit of a sad story, but he did so much. And I'm glad that we get to talk about him today and learn about him. So I'm gonna share my screen because I made a PowerPoint so it's easier. Oh, I just moved it. Okay, I've got so many boxes. I'm gonna move the boxes so that I can present. Okay. So this way you can see the book a little easier and see me. So Tiny Stitches, The Life of Medical Pioneer, Vivian Thomas by Gwendolyn Hooks and illustrated by Colin Bootman. Needles didn't scare Vivian Thomas. In fact, he designed the ones lying on the operating table in front of him. The instruments were small and delicate like a toy, but these needles weren't toys. In a few hours, they would help save the life of a little girl. Vivian checked the instruments carefully. They were sterilized. Do you know what sterilized means? It means that it's clean. So all of the germs have been removed. So they were sterilized because it's going inside your body. You want it to be clean, razor sharp and ready for a brand new type of operation that Vivian had invented. If it worked, the little girl would live to crawl, play and grow strong like other children. But would the operation work? Let's see. 
Vivian Theodore Thomas grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. Vivian's father was a master carpenter. Do you know what a carpenter is? We have some clues in the picture. Somebody said okay. carves woodwork, woodcutter. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, we see them cutting wood. So they build things out of wood. So he was a master carpenter. He was very good, who taught his son how to measure, cut, and seamlessly fit together pieces of wood. By the age of 13, Vivian was working alongside his father and earning enough money to buy his own clothes and shoes. He put the rest of his money in a bank to save for college. That's very smart. He's 13 and he's saving his money. From a young age, Vivian dreamed of studying medicine. With three colleges and a medical school for African Americans, Nashville was the perfect city in which Vivian's dream could come true. So remember, our story that we read last week, everything was very segregated. Do you remember what year that was around that? Could just be a general. Okay. the story we read last week, if you tuned in. So this was in the late 1800s. We'll just say a general era. And this story takes place, uh, well, right now it's in like the 1930s. And then the surgeries and things will take place in the 1960s, I believe. So this is much closer to our time now, but schools were still segregated. Uh, so let's see. In October 1929, the stock market crashed and the Great Depression that followed caused panic, hardship, and heartache throughout the United States. Banks lost their customers' savings and were forced to close. Vivian was one of the unlucky people who lost all his money. He had to start saving for college all over again. So with the start stock market crash, money that had been saved in banks just kind of disappeared. And so the banks had to pay off all this money and then they actually ran out of money and couldn't pay everyone back. So that's why in this picture, you see everyone at the bank saying, give me my money, give me my money. Cause the banks would give it away until it was all gone. So they didn't have enough money. And Vivian who worked so hard since he was 13 had to start all over again. Jobs were scarce for carpenters such as Vivian and his father. People could no longer afford to buy new houses to, or repair old ones. Luckily, one of Vivian's friends worked at Vanderbilt University and knew about a job opening at the medical school. Vanderbilt was an all white university. Vivian knew that the school would never admit him as a student, but he hoped working there meant he was getting closer to his dream of studying medicine. The next day, Vivian met with Dr. Alfred Blalock about the job. After a brief interview, so brief means very short, Dr. Blalock took Vivian on a tour of the lab. Chemical smells tickled Vivian's nose. His fingers itched to touch the equipment with fascinating names such as spirometer and blood gas manometer. Dr. Blalock said he needed someone he could teach to do anything I can do and maybe do things I can't. Vivian listened carefully as Dr. Blalock talked about his research projects. One of the projects captured Vivian's attention. Dr. Blalock explained that if a person was seriously injured and lost a lot of blood, his or her body sometimes went into shock. This means the person's blood pressure becomes dangerously low because too little blood flowed to the body's organs, such as the heart and lungs. This often led to the patient dying. Dr. Blalock was researching treatments for these shock patients. As Vivian listened, he also asked questions about the different procedures the doctor had tried. Dr. Blalock was impressed with Vivian and offered the job right away. On Vivian's first day of work, Dr. Blalock asked him to put an animal to sleep to prepare him for a shock treat experiment. 
uh, Vivian was uncomfortable with the idea of using animals for research, but Dr. Blalock explained that their research could save thousands of lives. So we remember from this story that the nurses had to practice on dummies before they could practice on people. So with hearts, you can't really use a dummy to practice all the time, so they had to use animals. So Vivian weighed the animal and calculated how much medicine it needed to fall into a deep, painless sleep. Then he set up the blood pressure equipment. Under Dr. Blalock's supervision, Vivian learned to conduct experiments and write lab reports detailing each step. I think, because, well, this is for grades three to five, although everyone's welcome, but I know in grades three to five, you're practicing lab reports. You, right? You have to write down each step. And why is it important to know every step that you take when you're doing research? We have some good guesses. The biggest reason is because if it's successful, you want to know how to do it again. So if you don't take good notes, then you don't know what you did right or what you could fix. So we always have to take good notes. So if it's something that you don't like practicing now, remember, it's very important to be very specific and take good lab notes. Dr. Beard, another doctor in the lab, loaned Vivian medical textbooks. He told Vivian, it was nice to be able to do a thing, but it was better to know why you're doing it. It wasn't long before Vivian was completing experiments from start to finish on his own. Vivian's surgical techniques improved with each operation. Just as he had learned to fit pieces of wood together seamlessly, Vivian learned to suture, or sew, blood vessels together seamlessly. Dr. Blalock was impressed by Vivian's tiny stitches, the title of the book. Sometimes Vivian assisted Dr. Blalock with an experiment. On other days, Dr. Blalock assisted Vivian. Vivian was happy working as a researcher until he learned that his official job description was janitor. Is what he do, is the work he's doing the same as a janitor? Because what does a janitor do? Yeah, they clean, they might sterilize things like in the bathroom to make sure that we don't get sick from each other's germs. So it's a very important job, but it's not the same as doing heart surgery, right? It's pretty different. So I think it's insane that they said his job was a janitor. White men with the same duties and skills as Vivian were called research technicians and earned more money. Vivian was insulted. He was not a janitor. He told Dr. Blalock that he would not continue working unless he was paid the same as the other technicians. A few days later, Vivian noticed his paycheck was much better. He now earned about the same as the white technicians. I'm very proud he said something because I think that was a brave thing to do at the time. In 1941, Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland invited Dr. Blalock to become chief of surgery. He accepted with one condition. His research technician, Vivian Thomas, must be invited too. Vivian didn't want to leave Nashville, but he knew he would be fired from Vanderbilt as soon as Dr. Blalock left. Many of the other doctors were not happy that Vivian had been working independently as a researcher. And if we look at this picture, the one that's on the right-hand side, and we see the dirty looks, can we guess why those doctors weren't happy that Vivian was working independently or by himself? Yeah, because it was he because he was black and they didn't like that. All of those doctors we see in the picture, they're all white. So just because of the color of his skin, he was already getting um, mistreated. So let's see what happens. 
Vivian accepted Dr. Blalock's offer. He was excited to start his new job at John Hopkins as surgical technician in research. But Vivian had a hard time finding a nice home for his family in Baltimore. The better houses and apartments were for whites only. It took months for Vivian to find an apartment. John Hopkins was much more segregated than Vanderbilt. So remember, segregated is when they separated people. There were whites only and colored cafeterias and restrooms in the hospital. Vivian was the only African-American working as a researcher. The stairs and whispers in the hallways were worse than at Vanderbilt. But Vivian refused to let the prejudice of others interfere with his work. And this is one of the many reasons that I think Vivian Thomas was such an incredible person because I don't know if you've ever had anyone whisper about you at school or if you've had a bully, but sometimes it's really hard. And I know like when I was little, sometimes it would make me want to cry and give up. And he didn't give up, you know, it must have really hurt to have people look at you and whisper about you, but he knew that he was helping people and he let that be the priority. With all of his mistreatment, he still helped people. And that's what I think is so incredible about him. One of the reasons. In 1943, Dr. Helen Tausig, a pediatric cardiologist. So what does a pediatric cardiologist do? Kind of a big word. Well, two words. So we know cardiologist is a what kind of doctor? They're saying heart operation, studies the heart, learns about the heart. Mm -hmm. And what's the pediatric part mean? Do we know that? Helps children, children doctor. Exactly. So she worked on not any heart, but just children's hearts. So she was a children's heart doctor. So Dr. Helen Tausig, a pediatric cardiologist, visited Dr. Blalock's lab. Dr. Tausig tr treated children with heart problems. Many of her patients were born with a heart defect that made their skin look bluish. Their bodies did not get enough oxygen. And over time, the children died. Dr. Tausig called these small patients her blue babies. Most doctors refused to do open heart surgery on a child. They believe children couldn't survive such an operation because that's a big thing. They have to open your heart, open your chest to get to the heart. Um, even so, Dr. Tausig asked Dr. Blalock to find a way to operate on her heart patients. Dr. Blalock was too busy with his own patients, so he assigned Vivian to do the research. Vivian headed for the Pathology Museum to investigate the collection of blue babies' hearts. He knew that a healthy heart pumps blue blood to the lungs to get oxygen. Once the blood is full of oxygen, it turns red. The, the red blood flows back to the heart and is delivered to every part of the body. With blue babies, however, something else was happening. Vivian noted the four defects in the heart that blocked some of the blue blood from reaching the lungs. This meant the, the blood continued to circulate through the body without its oxygen fill up. How do you get more blue blood to the lungs? It was a mystery Vivian was determined to solve. After a few months of experimenting, Vivian realized that the solution might be a procedure he and Dr. Blalock had perfected at Vanderbilt for a different problem. The procedure involved creating a shunt between the two arteries. If they sutured an artery coming from the heart directly to an artery going to the lungs, it would create a direct connection for the blood to make it to the lungs. Then a child's body would have all the oxygen it needed. Vivian tackled the next problem. Most needles were too long for a child's tiny chest and blood vessels. He needed to make needle, needles small enough to use on a baby. Vivian snapped off a half inch long piece of a needle. Holding the eye end with a clothespin, he filed the other end of the needle to a razor sharp point. 
Now he had a needle short enough to stitch together tiny arteries inside a child's chest. He is just such a, I don't want to say smart because he studied so hard. So I would say he was a very determined scholar because he studied so hard and he didn't have the right tools. So he made the tools himself. That's so cool. Vivian tried out his procedure and new needles on research animals. He found a way to attach two arteries successfully and have enough extra blood circulate into the lungs before it flowed back to the heart and then throughout the body. Dr. Blalock assisted Vivian only once during his experiments. And this is important to remember for later because guess who will get credit for all of this research and all of this practice during the experiments, even though this doctor only helped one time. On November 24, 1944, Dr. Tausig called Dr. Blalock about Eileen, one of her blue baby patients. The child was so sick that she would die if they did not operate on her immediately. Vivian knew his operation worked on animals, but would it work on a little girl? The next day, he would find out. Dr. Blalock was going to perform the procedure designed by Vivian. The morning of the operation, Vivian went to the operating room to check the instruments. Vivian headed back to the lab, but Dr. Blalock insisted he return to the operating room. Dr. Blalock asked Vivian to stand on a stool behind him and guide him through the operation. Some of the other doctors grumbled, what could Vivian possibly know? But Vivian focused on Dr. Blalock's hands and the baby on the table. Dr. Blalock opened Eileen's chest. <gasps> this part's hard to read. I don't like this part, but that's okay because sometimes doctors have to do these things. Vivian's own heart thudded with worry. The baby's blood vessels were so small. Were his needles tiny enough? Dr. Blalock began the operation. Is my incision long enough? He asked Vivian. Yes, Vivian responded. Dr. Blalock began a suture in the wrong direction. Other way, Vivian cautioned him. 90 minutes passed. Finally, the operation was over. Would Eileen survive? What do you think? Is baby Eileen gonna be okay? Let's see. Some say no, some say yes, maybe, I think. I, it's, it's a guess, we will see. <gasps> the baby's lips are a glorious pink color, Dr. Tausig said. Eileen did survive and slowly over the next few hours, her skin went from blue to a healthy pink color. So what does that tell us when the baby was blue and now is pink? He's healthy, he's alive, he's good. Yes, her blood is getting oxygen because it's turning red and making her look pink. <gasps> Yay! Yep. After two more successful operations, Dr. Blalock and Dr. Tausig wrote a scientific paper describing their innovative surgical procedure, which they named the Blalock Tausig shunt. National magazines such as Time and Life praised Dr. Blalock and Dr. Tausig. Vivian Thomas's name did not appear anywhere in the paper or magazine articles. That would hurt my feelings so much because we know how hard Vivian worked and how much he studied and he didn't get any credit. I'm almost crying thinking about it now. Did that ever happen to you where you did something good but someone else got credit for it? Maybe you made your bed at home and your caregiver thought that your brother or sister did it or your cousin or something bigger making the beds a little thing, but it kind of hurts when someone gets credit for your work. And this is a really big thing. They changed heart surgery. 
As news spread of Dr. Blalock's success, two or three operations a week soon became two or three operations a day. Patients came from as far away as Europe to have the procedure. Vivian remained standing on the stool behind Dr. Blalock, coaching him through more than 150 operations. In 1947, Dr. Blalock and Dr. Tausig were nominated for the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Although they did not win, doctors from all over the world traveled to Johns Hopkins to observe and learn the new heart procedure. When Dr. Blalock was busy, the visiting doctors went to Vivian with their questions. Vivian graciously shared his knowledge and skills. And that's another thing that I like about him because he was so generous. And at the end of the book, we'll read a couple other doctors that Vivian helped them to achieve their dream. Because that's one thing that everyone said about him. He was just so kind and he shared anything he could because he knew it would help people. And that's what I appreciate. Vivian Thomas was not publicly acknowledged for his brilliant research and surgical talents until more than 26 years after the first blue baby operation. On February 27th, ooh, that's coming up, 1971, the Old Hands Club, a group of doctors who had trained under Vivian, presented a formal portrait of him to John Hopkins Hospital. It is displayed across from Dr. Blalock's portrait. In 1976, Johns Hopkins University awarded Vivian an honorary doctorate degree and appointed him to the faculty as instructor of surgery. <gasps> Yay! A little late, but good. Although he never had the chance to attend medical school, Vivian's research pioneered open heart surgery on children. Today, about 40,000 children are born, are born each year with heart problems. Because of Vivian Thomas, these children now have a chance to live full and healthy lives. The end, yay! So here, because this is a nonfiction book and is about a real person, we can see a glossary. So if you wanted to know what shunt was, we can read in the glossary on the right-hand side that it's a surgical reconstruction or synthetic tube placed to divert blood from its normal path. So basically it's a tube that you put to move the blood to a different place. We can learn about tetralogy of Fallot. So that's the, the medical term for blue babies. And then more about Vivian Thomas. I wanted to take, oh, well actually we don't have too much time. So if you wanna watch this again and pause it, you can see all of the doctors that Vivian Thomas helped in the more about Vivian Thomas section. Cause like I said, he was so generous with his knowledge and helped so many people. And the end, and then there's a picture of the real Vivian Thomas at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. So I hope that you enjoyed learning about Vivian Thomas. I think his story is so incredible and I wish that I could have met him in real life, but he did so much to help hearts and you know who else does a lot to help hearts? Oh, but maybe he's not here yet. He might be here in a couple minutes. Um, does anyone get, wanna guess who is going to help our hearts today? Some of you might know him, I think. Yes, we're really excited for our special guest today. I'm ready. Me too. Oh, here he is. Does anybody know who that is? That's the amazing superstar, Mr. Andrew. Hi, guys. Good morning. Welcome him. Good Mr. Morning. Andrew also has a dog. He has a puppy in his house. <gasps> Another puppy? Yep. A puppy that's yeah. named as my daughter. <laughs> so, uh, I remember <laughs> yeah she's nice. crazy so she's probably barking in the other room somewhere <laughs> so make sure you have um, a, a safe space where you can um, have fun and start to work out um, and have a parent nearby just in case and if you don't feel comfortable doing any of the moves that Mr. Andrew uh, suggests today feel free to go into one of our yoga poses from last week but you're going to have a blast with Mr. Andrew. All right. So I heard it is Heart Health Month, correct? That's true. And you guys have already spoken about that. 
So we're going to talk about some of the um, categories that are in the food groups. So some of them are fruits, vegetables. If you know any other ones, you can share them. I know you you could type in the chat. Fruits, vegetables, grains, proteins, and somebody said it already. Dairy. I see meat. Meat is proteins. So we're going to speak about two today, which are fruits and vegetables. I'm going to share my screen with you guys in one second. We're going to play a game called Would You Rather. Um, so in this game, there's going to be two different choices um, of fruits. We're going to start with fruits. So you have two different choices based on those choices, what you like, you can share in the chat, which ones you like. Um, there's going to be an exercise that's associated with whatever fruit you choose. So here is the first one, oranges and apples. So do you like oranges or apples? The question is, would you rather oranges or apples? You can share in the, uh, in the chat, just like you were doing before, and then we'll get started. So if you like oranges, you are going to do jumping jacks. If you like apples, you're going to do kickers, which are behind your back. 20 seconds of each exercise, here we go. I like oranges, so I'm going to do jumping jacks. Huh. All right, good job. Take a second to catch your breath while we go over the next one. The next one is, would you rather blueberries or strawberries? Blueberries or strawberries? Let's see the exercises. So if you like blueberries, you are going to pretend you have a jump rope in your hands and you're gonna jump rope. If you like strawberries, you're going to do arm circles. I like strawberries, so I'm going to do arm circles. Good job. Here is the next one. Bananas or pineapples? Take a second to think about what you would rather. Here are the exercises. Squats, just bend your knees. And side hops, which is on one foot. Jumping side to side. Ready, here we go. Next one, sticking to fruits, cherries or grapes. Would you rather cherries or grapes? See the exercises. It is a side crunch. This is just picking your knees up to the side and high knees is just picking your knees up straight. 20 seconds, here we go. And rest. Let's 
see the next one. Still with fruit, peaches or plums? Would you rather peaches or plums? See the next set of exercises. Frog jumps. Just bend all the way down, jump up, and reverse jumps, which is just back, forward. 20 seconds, here we go. And rest. Next one, watermelon or pears? Watermelon or pears? Would you rather watermelon or pears? Watermelon, if you like watermelon, you are going to do front kicks. Just kick your feet forward. If you like pears, you're gonna squat down and jump up. Ready, here we go. Next one, we are going to move to vegetables. So these are examples of vegetables, no longer fruits. Eggplant or celery? Would you rather eggplant or celery? If you like eggplant, jumping jacks. If you like celery, you are going to do sit-ups. Here we go. Next one, carrots or green beans? Would you rather carrots or green beans? So pretend you have that jump rope again with our carrots and kickers, which is behind your back. Ready and here we go. Next up, broccoli or asparagus? Would you rather broccoli or asparagus? Let's see what the exercises are. Skipping or sliding? So sliding is just right to left, side to side. Skipping or sliding? 20 seconds starts now. Next one is spinach or peppers. Would you rather spinach 
or peppers. Take a second to think about it. And let's see the exercises. Mountain climbers on the ground, push up position, kick your feet forward and back. And bunny hops are feet together, bend down, jump up. 20 seconds starts now. All right, I think we are coming to my favorite slide. I can't remember, but let's see. All right, so we can't always eat healthy, even though it's really important that we do eat healthy. Um, there are times where we're going to eat candy and things that, other things that are unhealthy. So my favorite is Reese's. So would you rather Reese's or M&M's? Let's see the exercises. Front kicks, we did those before. Just kick your feet forward. And burpees, you're gonna go down, back, and up. 20 seconds, here we go. And my second favorite slide out of all of them, Kit Kat or Twix? I'm gonna say Kit Kat for this one. Would you rather Kit Kat or Twix? Arm circles, if you like Kit Kat, neck roll, if you like Twix. 20 seconds, here we go. Huh. All right guys, that is it. So, just because we exercise doesn't mean we are heart healthy. We also need to have a healthy mind to have a healthy heart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little breathing exercise. The only thing you need to do is just sit down. Um, you can keep your eyes open. You can close them. Only thing you need to do is listen. Here we go. When your day doesn't seem to be going quite right, there are things you can imagine in your mind that might help things get better. Close your eyes, listen, and follow along. Or keep them open and follow along that way. Whatever works for you. Settle in your chair or in your space on the floor. You may choose to lean back a little or sit tall. Let your hands rest in your lap. Try to put a picture in your mind. There's a small tree on a small hill. There's not much else around, just the tree. In the distance, off to one side or maybe behind the tree, there's a storm approaching. Imagine that you can see the wind starting to affect the tree. The leaves and the little twigs begin to move. Then the larger branches bend just a little. Then they bend a lot. Imagine that rain or snow starts to fall. 
and the small tree is getting wet and is starting to really sway even more with the increasing wind. The clouds above appear to be getting darker. The tree remains strong as it bends to one side. It stays firm in the ground. In your mind, let the storm rage on and push the small tree for a few more moments. It can take it. The tree is strong. The tree's roots secure it to the ground and the tree knows how to bend its little twigs and its large branches. It knows how to let its strong trunk sway with the push of the wind. The tree is safe. We can be like this tree. We can remain strong during challenges in our lives. We can bend, adjust, and hang on when we need to. We can be strong. We are strong. Now notice in the picture in your mind that the storm is gradually moving away. Further and further it moves from the tree. The tree's trunk straightens. The branches bounce back and the twigs settle. A few leaves have fallen to the ground, but that's okay. The tree remains strong and calm. It weathered the storm. We can rest now. Imagine that most of the clouds drift away and the sun peeks out. Breathe in and enjoy a long, slow out breath. All right, guys, thank you for letting me join Fun Friday. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend um, and I hope you're able to get outside in the snow. Thank you, Mr. Andrew, for helping us stay heart healthy today. And I guess pretty often if you're teaching a lot of the kids. <laughs> so thank you for joining us here though. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me join. It was a lot of fun. Is everyone tired? I know Kobo and I are tired. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great weekend. Thank you again. Bye everyone. And just remember for next week, it will be an open heart surgery. So all are welcome. But if that's something that's going to make you feel a little queasy, then maybe don't join us next week, but come back for the kickoff for March, which will be for Women's History Month. And we have some very cool guests joining us. Um, I, I don't know if you'll know their names, but you might know their shows. Does anyone here watch Weird But True? It's on Disney Plus, I think. Ah, so some people have seen it. So Miss Carly will be joining us and Miss Emily, who is on another show, Snug's Bed, maybe? I need to remember these. <laughs> Not in a long time. Well, you might want to brush off because we will will say we've got two TV stars joining us yes. for Women's History. They're going to do a really fun program for us. So if you don't want to see the open heart surgery, don't come next week or tell your friends if they would be interested, but you're not, that's okay. Some people like it. So those are the brave ones and maybe you will be our doctors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everyone's welcome to join, but if you're going to be feeling queasy, then please don't come because we don't want anyone to see something they don't want to see. But the next week, everyone should join us for Miss Carly and Miss Emily and for Women's History Month. Ms. It is a real heart surgery. Someone asked, is it real? It's a real one that's done right, I believe here in Jersey City, maybe in Newark, but in the area. It's with the Liberty Science Center and you'll be able to ask questions while we watch the surgery. So it should be pretty interesting if you're okay with seeing the insides <laughs> of people. <laughs> um, yes, so it's important work. I'm so thankful we have people that do open heart surgery because I know that has helped family members in my life. So I'm thankful. 
I just know that's not a job that I would have. <laughs> yes, you're actually going to see the surgery and you'll be able to ask questions while you're watching it. So it will be very interesting. Yeah, someone said, get your sis. If you have an older brother or sister or cousin or friend that's in middle school or high school, or even if your parents wanna sit in with you, it will be very cool. If you're interested in being a doctor and you wanna see how it is, this one won't be live because a live open heart surgery takes a couple hours. So we don't have that much time. So this one will be, it was filmed live, but they edited out parts of it so that we could see from beginning to end in a short amount of time. So yeah, so like I said, should be interesting, but just to let you know, all right, Lisa says her brother is coming. It is on a person, it's a real surgery. Kathleen's gonna be a doctor, so you might wanna join and you can ask questions. Yeah, I think it will be very interesting. Very nice, yeah. Perfect, we look forward to seeing everybody next Friday, if not the following Friday. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No worries if you don't wanna join. Like I said, this isn't my cup of tea, but it is important because we do need doctors that do these kinds of surgeries. It, it, it should be fun. I think it will be very interesting. I'm sure we're going to learn a lot. <laughs> and now we'll wrap up this fun Friday. So yeah. thank you for joining us. Have a great week. Stay safe in the snow. Get out and play if you can. I'm in the city, so there's nowhere to go. Everything's icy, so I'm going to stay inside. But maybe you have somewhere you can sled. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Have a nice weekend. Yes, you too. Bye, Miss Valdora. Happy birthday again. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.